So welcome to our first uh, Virginia Beach Cybersecurity Competition meeting for um, March. March, April, sorry, April, rain, uh, it's, been a, it's been a long year. Um, I understand, I see Bayside said they had some drop, I hate that. Um, this is a lot of work, I mean, honestly it is, but I do hope that you'll, uh, the teams will continue on, we're gonna have a good time. Um, we're coming in about, actually about a month, just a little less than a month, uh, up to see all of you and to run you through a, uh, a test of the competition, so you'll learn how to log into the system, use the system get in and uh, be able to actually be prepared when you sit down to, to, for the contest uh, in June. You won't be, uh, you won't feel as intimidated by the system itself. It'll be the, the, the content of what you know, not the system that's going to give you problems. Uh, what I want to do today is talk a little bit about the RFP or the request for proposal. This is due by 5 o'clock uh, Eastern Standard Time on uh, Monday, April 30th, 2018. Each team must send in a request for proposal. Uh, I want you to put your team name. I want to make sure you've got your information on it. And I want to walk through this today and talk about any questions you may have. Now, the big thing here is the entire purpose of this request for, for proposal is to give you an opportunity to, one, learn about how this pre-penetration test uh, and pre-project uh, session goes. I'll be quite honest with you. I'm in the middle of a huge data center project here at Stanley Community College. And one of the things I've been doing every day, I've been in here, I was here Monday, on Easter Monday, because they were drilling holes in the walls. I've been here while they were digging holes outside. I had to do all kind of assessments on what types of power cables to use, what types. A lot of my job this, this semester has been nothing to do with what I do in terms of teaching. It's been everything with project management. So I've had to sit down and do, you know, exactly what you're doing with this request for proposal. And the reason I, I want to include this is to show you some real world things. It's not just, unfortunately, about running the hacking tools, finding out about NMAP, finding your host, looking at the vulnerabilities and preparing those informa that information. A lot of it is how does my company win the bid to be able to do this in the first place? And that's what this request for propo proposal is. What we have here is a fictitious Virginia Beach Technology Consortium that's located, it's funny because we call it Virginia Beach Technology Consortium, but it's actually located in Burlington, Burlington Vermont, with offices in Washington, D.C., Ohio, and New Jersey. What they're wanting is they want to hire your team to do a penetration test of their network. Now, by penetration test, they want you to do a vulnerability scan, they want you to do what you need to do and what you're going to need to deliver are a couple things. First off, one part of your test or one part of your RFP will be this item right here, which is you're going to deliver to me a written report on how you assess their network, okay? And the information about the network as we go through, if you read through this, you will see that the network consists of 70 physical and virtual servers, four databases, Microsoft Windows, 200 staff computers, two internet connections, and 10 publicly facing IP addresses. I also sent out to your instructor some answers to some questions, which were, uh, how many, where are the physical locations where you'll be doing your penetration tests? Well, you're gonna do them in Burlington, Burlington, Vermont, Washington, D.C., Ohio, and New Jersey. So you need to plan for travel to those sites. Now for Ohio and New Jersey, just pick a city. We can say Cleveland, Ohio, uh, and in New Jersey, just pick a city. It's really not that big a deal for the city itself, but just plan that you've got to have travel to those four sites. Normal business hours for the business are nine to five, okay? Sometimes the employees do work outside of those hours. The, start, the Windows machines are a mixture of Windows 7 and Windows 10. Servers are 2012 and 2016. Office 365 is used for SharePoint, and uh, they use whatever versions in Office 365 for SharePoint. That's what they say. And they're using SQL Server 2014. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at your RFP. And in the RFP, the first item that will be graded will be this assessment item. In other words, your vulnerability assessment, where you look and say that we're going to figure out how we're going to do a vulnerability and penetration test. 
it's up to you to depend, decide what tools you're going to use and how you're going to do it. Are you going to just run scans from the outside? Are you going to try to physically uh, break into the building? Are you going to try dumpster diving? It's up to you. What I suggest you do, and as you've been preparing for this request for proposal, is just go out there and literally Google penetration tests or vulnerability assessments. Look at how companies are providing these services and then structure your written report on how you're going to do this and what tools you're going to use to the Virginia Beach Technology Consortium. Now, that will be probably a page, page and a half, maybe two pages at most, all right? So you don't have to write war and peace. I'm not asking you to do a massive 400-page report. I'm asking for you to do this and give me a good, concise understanding of how you're going to do your penetration test. If you don't have these items here, remind me and I will email them to your uh, instructor again, but here is the rubric. In other words, when I say professionalism, what I'm going to look at, how is it formatted? Dear sir or madam, ACME, whatever your particular group happens to be, ACME Corporation would like to present our proposal for a penetration vulnerability test on your Virginia Beach Technology Consortium, blah, 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 et cetera, et cetera. And that's not very professional, so don't use blah, 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 et cetera, et cetera. But I'm going to be looking at the way you structure it, how it looks, you know, is it presented in a good format? You can go out and grab off of Word a report format, or you can grab it off Google Docs or whatever. You can find a report format that will make it look professional, all right? I'm going to grade for grammar. Do you have spelling mistakes? Do you have, um, you know, missing words, grammar mistakes? Those types of things. Now, am I going to go through it like I'm an English professor looking at your um, thesis for college? No. By the way, I am, and I, I have two English degrees, but obviously I'm not using them that much since I'm working in technology. But I'm going to look for grammar because one of the things I want you to realize is that if you presented this proposal to someone and I'm hiring you to do my penetration test, the fact of how you present this proposal to me is going to say how well you're going to do your, your penetration test. So that's important. I'm going to look at your tool descriptions. Are you going to tell me what tools you're going to use for the penetration test, and do they make sense? All right? And the process description. How are you going to do the penetration test, the vulnerability assessment? So I'm going to look at all of that for the first, the penetration and vulnerability portion of the exam. You will get a grade of up to 50 points for that. I'm then going to look at your social engineering item. Now, what is this? The second deliverable here is a written report on a social engineering threat prevention program. In other words, this company is also hiring you to say, we want you to create a social engineering prevention program, an education program for us. What are you going to do? What are you going to use for your training? How are you going to do it? I expect this to be about a page, not much more than a page, okay, where you describe a very short, concise social engineering prevention program you're going to do. How would you train the employees to not be social engineered, to not have someone call and say, hey, this is Bruce in IT, and uh, we're having problems with your account. I need to know your password so I can test it. You'd be amazed the number of people I can get their passwords that way, even though it looks like it's from an outside uh, phone number. Uh, it's, it's crazy. That will be graded on two items. I'm going to grade that on professionalism, or excuse me, grammar and content, all right? So the grammar, spelling, those items, and the content. So that's up to 10 points, up to 20 points total for those two. And then the final deliverable is an invoice, which in, shows me what it's going to cost me, okay? So you're going to have to give me a, a thing here that says, hey, I want to know how much you're going to cost me. So give me a breakdown. What am I going to have to pay for travel? What am I going to have to pay? Don't just say, this is going to be $20,000. Well, great. That's fine. But what am I paying for? All right. So we need more than just that. You need to be more professional. It's also not enough just to say, you know, write a sentence that says, the vulnerability assessment will cost you $20,000. That's not very professional, and that's not much content. It's not going to work. I would suggest putting it into Excel, breaking down your costs, things like travel, tools. Are you going to have to buy tools? Okay. Are you going to have to figure out um, 
the best way to get your people to a particular site, what hotel's going to cost. All of this, and right now, I'll be quite honest with you, right now, that's what I'm doing. That's part of what I've been doing when I talk to you. I'm figuring out hotel costs for me to travel to a conference. So these are things you're going to do every day in your job in the real world. So it's a good thing for you to sit down and start thinking about. So you have three items you have to deliver to me on April 30th. That is the written report on the penetration and vulnerability test, how you're going to do it. How you're going to take place, what tools you're going to use, the written report on your social engineering prevention program you're going to create for the Virginia Beach Technology Consortium, and an invoice stating to me what your services are going to cost the Virginia Beach Technology Consortium. Now, obviously, I do I get bonus points if you go out and find an invoice template and make it look professional. So try to do that. Don't just throw it in Excel and say, oh, here it is. Go find an invoice template. They're easy. They're in Word. You can find them on the Internet. And, and make it look professional. Make it look like something you would really want to turn in to get a, a job. This is something that will allow you to, to see how companies move towards using, um, well, how they use a professional uh, application or RFP to try to get a job to do um a penetration test or written reports like this. So let me ask you this. Are there any questions as to what I'm asking you for for this RFP? You're not writing War and Peace, so don't think you've got to go and write 4,000 pages. Now, I would you know, suggest a good amount of research um, before you start writing. You know, get your research together, get your information together, and then write it. Um, and I would also obviously suggest please proofread it. Have your instructor proofread it. Not a bad idea. Um, you know, I write things all the time, send it an email, and then suddenly go, what in the world did I just send, even though I proofread it myself? So make sure it's proofread. But I'm not asking you to write a 20-page RFP. I'm looking at, you know, four pages, four to five pages most at most. Um, more likely to be around three pages of written information and, and the invoice itself. Um, cover pages are great if you want to put one in. They're not required, but obviously it wouldn't be a bad idea if you want to be professional. Um, so that's kind of what we're looking at with the RFP. So please let me know if you have any questions. If you want to chew on that for a few minutes and let me know if you have any questions. No questions. I'm going to pause the recording for a minute. So you... Okay, I'm going to open it up for general questions then. Are there any questions about what we're doing in the contest so far? Any questions on the CCNA CyberOps materials that you've gone through? How many of you are actually doing any of the CyberOps stuff? Be honest with me. By the way, you're you're probably – one of the first groups of students in North America who have access to that class. Um, there have been very, uh, in fact, I think maybe to this point it has only been instructors. You are the first students to actually have access to it. Okay. Bayside's got one who started on it. That's good. How about on the VE? Any problems on the VE competitions? Doing your labs there? Still working on on the labs, NMAP, uh, Metasploit, Kane and Able, all of those labs. Okay, good, good. Someone got something to say? Sound like I heard a mic come on. Okay, one thing, I do not have a huge amount today, that's my, uh, I paint miniatures, that's one of the things I do is for a hobby, so Warhammer, that was a, I was active at Private Chair Press. We do not have a huge amount of things for you today other than that RFP, I was figuring there'd be a little more discussion on the RFP than that, um, but I want to go in here and just kind of throw out for you, you've got, um, hopefully you've been doing these labs, 
one of the things, again, as we look through here, make sure you know how to use NMAP. He'll get social engineering tax for the social engineering toolkit. Yeah. I wonder if that, in some way, shape, form, or fashion, would relate to things I'm doing in the RFP. Yeah, maybe. Password cracking with John the Ripper and Hashcat, I would know that. Um, Backdooring with Netcat would not be a bad idea either. So some these labs, if you haven't been doing them, you need to try to get in there and start doing these so that you can uh, work on them. But those ones I just mentioned, reconnaissance, social engineering, obviously Metasploit's awesome. It's a lot of fun. Um, but password cracking, those are good. Those would be ones that I would suggest that you that you work on. If you haven't done those, I'm actually going to suggest that uh, for the rest of the day, I know you've got till 4 o'clock, I believe it is, or around 4 o'clock, but I would suggest that you go in, and if you have not done this lab 5, go ahead and do it. If you have done it, go ahead and do labs nine, all right, and work on doing that. If you've completed all of those, then I would say do lab 11, all right. So this is your opportunity to go under becompetitions.stanley.edu, log in, and work on the ethical hacking labs. And that's what I'm going to have you do today. I'm not going to lecture on anything new. I'm just going to let you work on the labs themselves. Are there any questions before I stop the recording? Because I'm not going to just sit here and do the recording when there's there's nothing being asked. If you have any influence with the other schools that are in the competition, please work to have them start coming to our meetings um, so that we can have a little more interaction, a little more work here. Uh, it seems like we've had a big drop off, which is a little disappointing. So I'm going to stop the recording so we don't have to.